Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and I lost 120 pounds by eating a meat only carnivore diet. So I am always looking for a really awesome way to cook steaks, especially indoors. You don't have the grill option inside. Most ways that you're gonna cook meat inside makes your kitchen messy, your house smoky. It's just a disaster, let's be honest. And so I am testing out a product today that is an indoor infrared grill that promises to give you that same flavor and char of the outdoor grill, but we can do it inside for less mess. I just unboxed it, and first of all, the very first thing that I noticed it is, is nice and small, um, which, is, which is good and bad, let's be honest. So it fits perfectly under even shorter countertops. It doesn't take up a lot of countertop space, but you are not gonna be able to cook like four big steaks in here at the same time. The grilling surface is really gonna be for two steaks at a time. You could do probably three burgers on here, quite a few hot dogs, a couple pieces of fish. So if you are somebody who eats meat along with some sides or you're one person who eats a ton of meat in one meal, this is gonna be a good option simply by the size. I'm really just interested to see if we can get a good char indoors, if it leaves my house not smelling like meat, and if I can keep things from getting too messy. Over the next week, I'm gonna be cooking lots of different things on this grill. I have some fish, I have a chuck eye steak that we're gonna to do today to give it a first test, uh, and I'll do even some basic things like hot dogs and burgers, and I'll let you know by the end of the week when you're watching this, how it turns out. It comes with two different grilling racks. We have a nice flat surface one that you could fit you know, several uh, burgers on, a couple steaks, and then it also is a concave one, which would be great for anything like hot dogs, so they're not gonna be rolling around inside. The bottom has a drip tray pan, which is going to protect it from the heat, as well as uh, catch all of the fat drippings and make sure there's no flare-ups, similar to an outdoor grill that I love and often use. And then it also has a resting pan broiler tray, which you know I love. The most important thing is letting your meat rest afterwards. And so this is gonna keep it up, keep the integrity of hopefully a crust that we can create so it's not gonna get soggy sitting in its own juices. It also came with a handle to pull things in and out so you don't burn your hands and a probe meat thermometer. I actually am gonna set this aside. This is gonna be the perfect opportunity to use the meter Bluetooth meat thermometer, which I have been using for many years. If you've watched any of my cooking and what I eat videos, this always comes up uh, because it is the wireless probe that I hook up to an app on my phone uh, and it's gonna give me the exact temperature of the meat and make sure steak turns out perfect every time. The meter works in the air fryer, crock pot, oven, smoker, really anything under 527 degrees. So if you have a hot high flame grill, you're gonna to wanna to keep it off of that, but anything else this is gonna be perfect for. We're gonna see how meter works in the Jamelli because this guarantees to get up to 1560 degrees, which is much too hot for this, but I have a feeling if I keep this out of the direct flames, then it's still gonna work just fine. So let's go ahead and get it turned on and see how long it takes to warm up. As this grill is preheating, which I can already feel the heat coming off of it, I'm gonna be prepping my steak. I have a really nice marbled chuck eye steak that I'm gonna cook, really good thickness. Anything that was frozen would not work in this, so you do wanna make sure everything is nice and thawed, but this has a lot of fat on it, and I'm curious how the fat is gonna render on the side, so I figured it would be something good to test with it. I'm gonna dry my meat off. No matter how you're cooking your meat, indoors or outdoors, you wanna make sure that meat is nice and dry, otherwise we can put it on a hot grill it's simply gonna steam the surface of your meat and not leave it really good and charred. The other thing that I'm gonna do is season with only salt. If you have something that's flame is coming in contact with the meat, any spices like garlic are gonna burn and leaving that burnt garlic taste on your meat. So I tend to stick to something like salt when I'm grilling or using flame, especially if you're using a cast iron. And then you can add butter or other seasonings afterwards. I got my meter positioned right in that thick part of the meat. Anytime you're using a probe meat thermometer, you wanna make sure that that tip of the probe is not hitting one of these fat lines, otherwise you're gonna get inaccurate temperature readings. So it's nice right there in the middle in the meaty part. Make sure you add the water to the bottom of the pan before preheating. It's putting off a really good amount of heat from the front, but I'm really not feeling anything. My cabinets aren't hot and the sides of the grill are not getting really hot. So that does make me feel better about it sitting countertop. That ding means it's ready to go. So I'm gonna slide my steak in and we're gonna give it a try.
Overall, for my first attempt, I'm pretty impressed actually with the crust that I got on it. It's perfectly medium rare, just like I wanted it. The fat inside is even rendered. It did take a little longer than I was expecting, but there's a little learning curve with placement of the grill, and then also I'm trying to film at the same time. Plus, I somehow got distracted and made the kids dinner halfway between. So uh, I'm gonna try it a few more times. I'm gonna try out some fish and shrimp and a few other things indoors. And then at the end of the week, I will let you know my full results. All right, we have been using the Jamelli grill for about a week now, and overall, it cooks an amazing steak. That cannot be denied. Uh, the char that it gives, it's nice and simple, really cooking, giving it an indoor sear, fantastic, and I'm very impressed. It does not leave my house smoky. There's a little meat smell, let's be honest, with cooking any kind of meat indoors, but not nearly the same way that you would with a cast iron skillet. I don't have that smoke or that lingering meat smell the next day like I do. Um, cleanup, very simple. Pull the trays out, wipe it down, wash the trays in the sink, really simple. The downside to the grill is the size. It's small, like smaller than I was expecting small. So if the size will work for you, I think it can be a really amazing indoor tool. But I used these two Costco burger patties, which are pretty big frozen burger patties. I could cook two burger patties on it. However, I needed to rotate them around in order for them to both be cooked evenly. Ideally, you put one burger patty right in the middle uh, and it would cook it much faster uh, and more efficiently if it was centered properly. The coils do not extend the entire length of the rack. So as long as you're aware of that and adjust your cooking, then it makes it a little easier. Chris cooked some amazing pieces of fish. I'm not a big fan of fish, and so that fish smell in the house usually really bothers me. But he got a nice char on the fish, and I didn't even notice the smell a couple hours later when I got home. So I was appreciative of that. We used it for warming up leftovers. So that burger patty, we had some leftover pork. I piled it on top of the burgers, melted some cheese on top as if it was a broiler unbelievable. I also cooked some hot dogs and got a really nice grilled char taste on my hot dogs, put some pulled pork on top and again broiled them with some cheese. Was very impressed with that and really enjoyed that experience. I also cooked some shrimp and asparagus. So if you're a carnivore, avert your eyes because I cooked a vegetable just to see how it was gonna go. I put the shrimp on the top. These are the jumbo frozen shrimp from Costco. I could only fit about nine shrimp under the coils. And then on the bottom shelf, while the shrimp was cooking, I had my asparagus started. Once the shrimp was done, I rotated the asparagus around and gave it a little char at the end, but I was pretty pleased with the texture. Uh, the kids liked the grilled asparagus that I got out of the grill, and so that was a nice, easy meal. So if you're somebody who really enjoys meat and a vegetable or a piece of meat, this would be a really good size to do everything all at once. Also cooking something like a pork chop uh, or two would be really fantastic. I don't think you could get more than two pork chops uh, in this. So really the size I think is the biggest factor if you're making this decision. If you're one person or if you're two people who do meat and sides uh, or if you're one person looking for one really fantastic way to cook a steak indoors, this would absolutely be it. Uh, I really did enjoy the, the flame. The Time and temperature was a little tricky. It took me a little bit, a couple times, just to make sure that I put enough time. As soon as it preheats, it starts counting down on the timer. And so I wanted to make sure, it took me a little while to get used to setting the right time. But overall, it was very easy to use and the cleanup was nice and simple. I really enjoyed the flavor that I got from the meat. So if the size is an limiting factor for you, then I think it's a great product. Hopefully this review was helpful. You can check out the rest of my channel to see reviews on other products uh, and let me know down below what other types of things you'd like to see me review to see if it would be a good fit for your home. Uh, once again, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for the support and enjoy lots of delicious meat.